What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's get to the show, and the number one question many of you have been asking, what's up with the IMAX? Now, we're expecting them before the back-to-school season with all the new Ivy Bridge processors, and a new report from How to Arena says their supply chain sources say they'll be refreshed in the June-July time frame, which really isn't a surprise, but it's the first outlet to make such a claim. Now, a rule of the rumor mill is to give yourself two months, so it falls somewhere in there. Now, a recent DigiTimes report also claims that G-Tech Optoelectronics is working with Apple on anti-reflective glass for the next-gen IMAX. We saw the sunflower-inspired IMAX with a matte screen. Apple has made it a build-to-order option for MacBook Pros, and it's a welcome request for many users. Now, more news. Avatron is a company with an app called Air Display that allows you to use your iPad as a second monitor. It's really cool stuff, but their new update has revealed Mac OS X's high DPI support that stayed hidden because they currently do not have high resolution retina displays for desktops that support it. Now it's supported through the app using the new iPad as a monitor, but it also is a nugget that hints we might see a high DPI retina like display for Macs in the future with built in OS X support already existing. And what about those Mac Pros? Are we going to see them again? Now I predicted this year would be the last. But after talking to a couple close sources of mine, they've really made me believe we will not see Mac Pros this year and moving forward. Now, I could be completely wrong, and I'll own up to it if I am, but all indications from my side tell me the Mac Pro is dead. <laughs> I know, I know it's <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the latest with the Apple TV? Well, don't call it that if you're Jeffrey's analyst, Peter Misek, who's been totally wrong in the past but still gets paid to do his job. He's calling the product, get ready for it, the iPanel, because it's far more than a TV. He says it's a display, a gaming center, media hub, a computer, a home automator even, and he sure knows about these features for a product that doesn't even exist. Now, he says it will retail for $12.50, and it will go on sale by the end of 2012. All right, you guys have heard of a popular game called Draw Something that's really taking over your life, but drawing with your finger isn't all that it's cracked up to be, so let's check out this how-to tip from Donald Bell for creating your own stylus. Touchscreens offer an awesome and simple way to navigate and interact with your tablet or smartphone, except when they don't. When it comes to detailed controls, something like drawing or writing, it can be really useful to have a pen. But not just any pen will work, since it's not a matter of pressure, but an issue of electric conduction. You can buy a compatible stylus for as little as $5, but what if you need something right now? Well, in this scene at How To, I'm going to show you how to make a touchscreen pen that's essentially free, assuming that your boss will look the other way if you raid the supply closet. So here's what you'll need. You'll need a pen, a paper clip, and a sponge. Now make sure that the pen is one of those that you can pull apart. You also need three tools, pliers, scissors, and a drill. First step, pull the pen apart and remove the ink cartridge. Keep it around though, you'll need it later. Next, slice a little rectangular wedge off of the sponge. You're going to be squeezing a chunk of this through the barrel of the pen, so make sure it's small enough to get in, but thick enough to stay put. Any sponge should do, as long as it has a little moisture in it, and you can always test it out by using it directly on your screen. Next step, drill a hole into the pen barrel. The hole needs to be big enough for the paper clip to get through. Now, shove the sponge through the barrel so that it pokes out of the tip. Then, put the pen back together. And finally, flatten out that paper clip and poke one end of it into the hole that you made, just so that it's jabbing the sponge, and then wrap the rest around the barrel. So long as your hand is in contact with the metal, it'll carry an electric charge through the sponge and to the screen. Now, it won't work if the sponge is completely dried out, though, but a few drops of water should get you back in business. So there you go, a DIY capacitive stylus you can use with any tablet or smartphone. It's not pretty, but the price is right, it's easy to customize, and you can make one in just a few minutes. See, look, guys, with my own stylus, I'm able to make amazing drawings like this. All right, thanks, Donald. Now, back to the stories. News broke that over 600,000 Macs were hit by a flashback Trojan taking advantage of an old Java vulnerability. So just in case you use a Mac, it doesn't mean you're totally safe. Now, over half of those infected were in Cupertino, and 20% of them are in Canada. Apple has finally responded with their own Java patch, but they were slower to respond because the Big A likes to release their own patches. It's available now, so get on it. 
Now, in some cool patents from Apple, a new application found by Apple Insider shows off what's described as active electronic media packaging. Now, it would be an active packaging system that supplies power and data to devices wirelessly with an RF power transmitter and allows them to show and display content while in the package. Pretty crazy stuff there. Also, everyone wants to know what's going on behind the scenes of Cupertino, and according to Nantech, Apple has been working on an internal project to bring a physical game controller to market to complement the new iPad. Now, other companies have made products that address this, but a wireless and seamless Apple implementation could be pretty sweet, especially with the improved gaming performance the iPad delivers. But right now, it's a dream. And if you're dreaming about 7-inch iPads, Daring Fireball's John Gruber says that a 7.85-inch iPad does indeed exist in Apple's labs, running at the same 1024 by 768 resolution as previous iPads. So who knows if they'll release it, but if enough of you ask for 7 inches, you might get it. I don't know, Brian. I prefer 10 inches. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send us your emails to the AppleBite at CNET.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the Apple.